Good morning. Is this thing on? Bruce. Brendan's going to lead the meeting. He'll be here shortly, I think. I just put the notes in the chat. Hello. Sorry, I had some issues with your computer joining Zoom. <laughs> I just put the notes in the chat so people could add themselves in attendance. Hi, long time no see. Hey, Justin, um, do you know if Santiago is able to join us today? Yeah, I'm not aware of Santiago being uh, available or not today. There's a bunch of stuff going on, so it's kind of hectic. Okay. Thanks for having fact, me, uh, Yeah. In fact, I have, uh, I'm going to have to drop off in a few minutes myself anyway because of a conflict that I have, unfortunately. Okay. Um, Maybe we should ask if Justin has any particular yeah. agenda items that he wants to speak to. Uh, I mean, I guess uh, what I'll say is tough is now up for a vote for graduation. So, um, Plus ones are appreciated. Um, if anyone has a chance to to vote on that, I will, I guess, post it in the. If I can find the link here, I'll post it in the. Um, yeah, if you put it in the meeting notes, I think that'd be good. Yeah. Um, well, I have a okay. question that has reared up in my life recently that is, kind of tough adjacent. Um, which is whether we know if, is anybody giving any thought to the signing disconnect between Cryoland and Dockerland? Oh, that's um, that's something that I within IBM we're discussing, especially now since we have the predicament of having both solutions we have to look at. Um, uh, there are some trade offs. I I think I'm not sure Justin Carmack is on the call. Can you? Um, I just added myself as scribe. Can you repeat the question? Because I wasn't thinking to write well, it down. The question was whether anybody is giving any thought or has any ideas about the disconnect in signing approaches between Docker land in Tough Notary and Cryo land with GPG signing. Yeah, so uh, uh, I think that, yeah, go ahead, Justin. No, I was just going to say that's a, like a long inflammatory discussion that I don't have a lot of time to get into. But um, we, uh, this actually, if you're going to be at KubeCon next week, uh, we'd love to sit and, and uh, have a chat with you about it. And I, we do I, talk about this. I, I am. I would love to. Um, we are, you know, we went be, from our version three to version four in September. We went from uh, Docker to Cryo more, uh, yeah, Docker to Cryo, honestly, to, to, be, to be honest, more, uh, more abruptly than I would have wished. I had an engineering schedule gun to my head that said, oh, you want to continue and deprecate uh, Docker instead of dropping it wholesale? Um, that's another four months, thanks. Um, so things got 
kind of out of hand, and we are now facing the idea that our private registry story is not terrific, and in moving ahead, um, you know, there are <laughs> there are really two, three choices for us to work with, and one of them does what we need, the other one uh, may be preferable in some ways, but doesn't, and would love to see, would love to discuss and see if there's a way forward, and yes, indeed, it's an inflammatory subject. So I will be there. Okay, sounds good. So we'll, let's, yeah, let's talk. Um, I'll, I'll send you a private message here with my. Yeah, uh, Roger, which um, company or organization were you from again? SUSE. Sorry? SUSE. SUSE, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, just uh, I'd be interested in that as well. I think I guess like um, just in comic as well. So I think there's some discussion going on at the OCI weekly um, meetings sometimes. Okay. So yeah. Um, cool. Okay. So um, sorry for the no worries. High bar, but <laughs> okay. Yeah. So if you if anyone hasn't um, signed in yet, please add yourself to the Google Docs, and then I think we'll start off with um, the just going around so let's start we already talked um justin do you have anything else or was that what's that that's that's i think the main thing um i guess there's a few other things related to uh tough integration to python and stuff within toto and things like that but i in the interest of time i'll just leave those aside okay all right um next uh, sarah um, I'll leave my, all my updates are on the agenda. <laughs> so okay. I've put a bunch of things on the agenda in terms of like what's been going on at GitHub. I haven't been present at meetings, but I've been trying to be consistent about looking at GitHub PRs. Um, also, if somebody who's not Brendan can be scribe because he's facilitating the meeting, it would be great to have another scribe. All right, uh, Roger. Thank you, Ash. That. Unfortunately, I'm on my phone, which makes that kind of a pain. So, do you want to give a, a brief um, kind of? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, what, was, what have you been up to? What that working? was my hard describe. Um, I let's see. So, as I said, we've had a recent release. We are working through um, both some issues that. Um, Twist lock runs have turned up recently, and um, working on a, an internal negotiation between our uh, corporate security engineering team and our containers team, which used to have two security guys embedded in it, to figure out um, how we're going to. Uh, work with them going forward. Now at the same time, um, I talked about this a while back, but I would like to be able to be more, um, more involved in um, assessments. So I will get on that now that, now that uh, the release that took a year and a quarter to get out the door is out and we're on a regular uh, quarterly release cycle, I should uh, be able to do that. Great. Um, and if since you'll be at KubeCon, uh, I think we're gonna we're gonna have a in person meetup. So uh, cool. we'll figure that out. Yeah, awesome. All right. Thanks, Roger. Uh, next is me. So uh, I think most of the stuff that I have is in the agenda. Um, I have a request. Uh, we created an issue for trying to organize an in-person meetup at KubeCon San Diego. So if you're going to be there, um, do put a note in there that you're going to be there so that we can coordinate something. Maybe we'll have um, dinner on the Tuesday or, or something because I think Wednesday is the, the KubeCon party and then Monday is the speaker's event. Yeah. So. If you could, um, I put the link into the issue in the agenda. So if 
Yeah, you'll be there. Uh, let us know. All right, um, Andrew, and Andrew. Hi, thanks. Um, so I this is only my second time. Uh, unfortunately, it was a few months uh, because I had a meeting. Um, so I worked at Intel Labs in the um, data center security team, um, and we're interested in all sorts of security questions around cloud uh, data centers. Um, and in particular, I'm working on um, function as a service security um, and compartmentalization of um, yeah, of security sensitive things. Um, and yeah, I'm just here to listen in and see what problems are. Um, so yeah, thanks. Great, thanks Andrew. Uh, Frederick. Hello, so I'm uh, new to this particular community, um, looking to uh, learn what you all are doing. And eventually, I, uh, in a future time, I'd like to talk about uh, potentially some integrations I've been looking at with, uh, with uh, SPICI, Spire, and uh, an open policy agent together, and to, to uh, see if it, if it makes any sense to try to integrate any of that stuff in to uh, some of the stuff that's, that we're all working on here. Uh, but I want to learn first before I propose anything, so. Oh, well, uh, I don't have anything else. you're working, for what are you working on right now? Okay, so I work on two things. Uh, one of them is I work on, I'm uh, the co-founder and maintainer of Network Service Mesh. Okay. And uh, I also work at a healthcare uh, a uh, company that does artificial intelligence, but we do our all of our work on Kubernetes, and so we have uh, uh, PII and uh, potentially PHI that we have to that we have to defend. So, uh, I, so I'm that's so that's the second reason I'm here is to try to work out uh, like what to, what's the best what are the best strat or like what are people doing now like what's what's coming down the pipeline. So that I can make sure that we integrate our stuff into it and and uh, mitigate uh, threats as well. So uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking for support in this uh, in this area. I have groups I can I can approach and pay, uh, but uh, but I do want to know what's coming down the pipeline, which I believe this is the uh, appropriate group. Okay, great. Welcome, Frederick. Thank you. Uh, all right, uh, Martin. Uh, Martha, we can't hear you. Are you oh, on um, it's typed in no updates. Oh, oh it's in the okay. notes. All right. Um, Amy, uh, yesterday see you all at KubeCon, so I'm guessing no updates as well. Okay. Um, Ray, no updates. <clears throat> no updates from Ash. Uh, Michael. Hi, all. Um, so we've got the cloud native security day or the six security day on Monday. Uh, I want to say the last time I know, got a registration count of last week before we closed it, we were at 175. Um, so we should have a, a, a pretty good turnout there. Um, we worked with Emily from the CNCF to figure out uh, what we're going to do from a space perspective. And we actually have um, four separate rooms for breakout rooms for the open spaces. And then we have uh, the main ballroom where the talks will be held. And then we can do two open spaces in that space as well. Um, so we have a, a, a nice set of area for us to all spread out. And then we can have these conversations without having to talk over one another and everything like that. Uh, so pretty excited about that. And the CNCF has been extremely helpful in getting those things uh, ready. On the Falco side, um, we're expecting that a vote gets called today for considering Falco for incubation. Um, we have went through all the due diligence uh, and that is an email that was sent recently to the TOC mailing list uh, around Falco and the growth of the project over the last year. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. So if you see that come across and you have thoughts, um, please plus one it if you can. Um, sure you support otherwise uh and then we uh the falco team has uh an off-site uh i'm actually out in reno getting ready to head over to tahoe to have an off-site before kubecon 
where we're going to do some planning. And then also, uh, <clears throat> Sarah, I know you asked uh, about the security assessment. So I'll make sure that I bring that up with the rest of the team and uh, get that on our, uh, our plan for the next quarter or so. And we should hopefully get that done <clears throat> now that we're through incubation. Great. That's all for me. All right. Um, no updates from Ben. Um, Christian. Find the unmute button. Um, I talked to the team that is working on, I, on our internal role recommender, which is uh, something that uh, came up in, in last week's call that uh, people want to know how they can do least privilege and ask them if they could give us a, a, a presentation. No. They're not quite ready to do that, yes, but at some point we might be able to, to uh, give a presentation here. And, and, and okay, yeah, sounds good. Um, I'll I'll write that down as a, a note in the in the future meetings and then yeah exactly exactly ready. and it, if you guys want to look at it it's it's called role recommender I think so if you look for Google role recommender or something you will be able to find it it's in public beta at the moment so it's not a secret I can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right great um, all right then no updates um, so I think that's it for stand ups let me just check with the um, Mark, any updates? Hey, no updates. I'm just going to mention the, the NIST adversarial terminology report. This, I think it's probably closing for comment this week, but something we might think about is automating uh, the machine, either machine learning based or manual test, test automation as part of one of our recommendations down the road. There's sort of a framework for doing that in that this paper no no other updates uh, do you do you think it would be uh, something that you could talk about like one of the sessions in the future sure sure if there's interest it's it's kind of in the weeds but yeah i could give an overview <laughs> all right awesome all right um i think that's it for stand up some um, check-ins um sick off policy work group any work groups or updates All right, let's see if of this done. Um, so first thing on the agenda, I think we had, um, we have a PR um, which is on the update of the code of conduct. I think Sarah, you just merged this in. Um, yeah, I can go over yeah. it if, um, uh, I think this is it, share, because um, I think, Emily drafted this. Um, this came up in conversation and Emily took the lead on writing down what, you know, sort of basically like we do go through these security assessments and how we wanted to write down what we, many of us feel is that of course we would be careful with draft information and we talked about it in meetings, but we didn't really have it written down. Um, so um, one aspect of it that came up um, was talking about just sort of how we deal with the group in general. And so we decided to add to our code of conduct that um, our, we have that, you know, she originally talked about like ethical conduct and then um, various folks chimed in. Thank you for um, how, how do we word that? Right. And, and what does that mean exactly? And we are all here. Most of us are here because our company is paying our salary to participate in this. So we, you know, we are benefiting our company in some way, but um, what we decided to do is point to the mission and charter, which talks about making cloud native um, security, like reducing risk in general, and um, that we, everything we do is open source and it's designed to be for the equal benefit of the whole community. So sure, we, you know, if we can benefit our companies to be more safe, that is great. Um, but that, you know, the information is for us all. Um, are there any questions about that? Um, so then the other part of it um, is, you know, also kind of an important detail um, where the draft assessments really clearly are 
some stuff that we have questions about. And just because there's a question doesn't mean it's a problem. And just because there's an assertion of a, in a draft assessment doesn't mean it's true. And so we want the security reviewers and the people doing self-assessments to feel comfortable, like, you know, discussing things, asserting things, and then coming to a conclusion about whether something is worrisome or not and fact checking as part of the process. And so um, I think it's really great to have that written down. And then um, there's a, another kind of assertion that we've talked about where um, the assessments are to help people evaluate whether this project is right for them and their risk profile. It's not an assertion of like, yay, secure, not secure, right? <laughs> Security is not binary, it depends on context. So. Um, so yeah, so I wanted everybody to be aware of these and um, as newcomers come into the group, if people have confusions about what exactly we're doing here, <laughs> that um, hopefully will help. Great. Um, any questions on that? Uh, I guess um, is this something that the CNCF kind of would also want to say about that eventually about, you know, how often these things are reviewed. Does it, like, does that every, actually provide, like, what does the security assessment kind of provide for a CNCF project? I remember we talking about that at some point. So we do have a, it's actually on my machine to make it a PR. Um, we have an issue about um, that talks about um, how we are like sort of the process for going through security reviews. And it might be good if I can, I'll look for it and add it to the agenda if we have time to go through that. Cause I think it'd be good to chat about it if it hasn't been talked about, but basically we're committed to doing annual reviews, which could be as easy as an asynchronous, Hey, has anything changed? No, the feature set's identical. Um, here's the progress. On, then one of the reasons we're trying to be rigorous about having actual GitHub issues for everything that's raised in the assessment is that if there are no new features in a year, <laughs> we could just go through the open issues and be like, oh, these are resolved. We have not, like, nothing new here and we don't have to do a full assessment. Um, and that over time as things graduate, you know, I think a lot of projects will end up with it just being like a quick check-in rather than a, a, as significant as a first review. Okay. All right, cool. Okay, let's move on to the next um, item, which is the supply chain catalog. Um, I think I want to talk a little bit about this, but I don't think Santiago is around. Um, so I've reviewed, let me share my screen. Um, Right, there we go. So I've reviewed um, the, the files that he's put in. I think everything looks good so far. Um, is there anything else that we're waiting on this? Or I suppose you just, you added some comments here. Well, yeah, I just went through it and found some broken links. That's okay. really minor. Um, <laughs> right. but, uh, but yeah, maybe you can do, you can show in the view. Yeah. Like if you view the, re the um, root readme, then, um, oh, sorry, wrong button. Actually, maybe, I don't know if there's a button to open it so that the links work. Uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm, I don't know how that works. So um, does um, anyone know if we can just go into the, uh, I guess I can go to the branch. Give me a second. I think it's this one. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is where it will be. And so, um, one of the things that I think is um, really neat about this is that it came out of the security assessment for Intoto. They, you know, there was great discussion of like, they're not saying that they do every single possible thing in the whole software supply chain. And there are things that are outside of the scope of what Intoto does. And they had collected all of these compromises. And so there's enthusiasm from various people in the group to catalog the co the compromises and determine whether there are gaps of things um, that or what the gaps are um, 
and also kind of develop a vocabulary around these kind of threats because there are different classes of threats here. And so there's a catalog here and this is a first step. And then um, the idea is that we would generate additional information for that root readme if we go back to that, Brendan. Yep. Um, where the, there's like on mitigating vulnerabilities, <laughs> It's like not much information and we're not going to hold the pull request until that's filled out, even though there's been some discussion and there's some ideas so that Santiago can submit the compromise catalog and then others can chime in with um, additional information or, you know, categorizing this. And so I think this is kind of like an exciting addition to our repository and creates a way for, you know, us to kind of knowledge share across the group. All right. Um, let me start the sharing. Any any questions on supply chain stuff? No. Okay. So I found the other um, the uh, uh, what's it the issue for the security assessment guidelines. If you want me to dive into that. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's go into that. So here we have, um, this is as a doc that Liz and Joe reviewed and it was kind of, um, you know, and came out of a bunch of discussions with the, um, like how does the TOC's directives, right, map to what we're doing. And so um, we, we already had this security assessment facilitator, and then we have an assessment queue, which is actually called an assessment matrix right now. Um, one of the things that I've been meaning to like write up or talk about is some of the stuff in here is a little like redundant with stuff that's inside the issue. So I was thinking maybe if we don't have, like either we should track the project contacts here or in the issue, right now we're doing it in both. And um, so we should figure that out. Um, but maybe somebody can make a note of that as an action item to sort that out. Um, and then I'm the named chair who provides official oversight of the security assessment initiative so that my responsibility is that if there's any questions about prioritization or process that want, need to be raised to the TOC level, um, I would bring that up in meetings with um, Joe and Liz and also kind of provide a little oversight. And so what I've been doing is if I'm actually a security reviewer, I tap JJ to be the person who does the like sort of chair review. Um, but generally there's like sort of a, an extra process review <laughs> that happens to make sure that we're communicating effectively the different things. And then, um, we set up these preconditions that either the project is a CNCF project or there's some kind of assertion that this is project is cloud native. Um, and so that we don't get caught into the weeds of reviewing every sec security related thing in the world. Um, and then the key precondition is that the project itself wants to be involved and has identified the project lead in a written self assessment. And there's some discussion about like um, on one of the issues about how much should the TOC be um, encouraging projects to do this, right? And should we have, um, you know, should they have said that Falco should have done the assessment before incubation and so forth. And um, I think one of the things that, um, you know, like we've talked a little sort of more in smaller groups about is that we really want to be confident that we can execute on an assessment in like our target is I think Justin, I don't know if Justin's still here. Um, he's been very focused on keeping our target at three weeks, which we haven't yet achieved. <laughs> um, 
So we want to be able to say, okay, project, if you prepare a self-assessment, as soon as that hits the ground, as long as we know it's coming and you're in the queue, we can go start to finish three weeks or whatever it is, right? If it ends up being three and a half weeks or four weeks, we just need it to be a bounded amount of time. And so we're still in the phase where we kind of want projects that are willing to make up the process with us, right? And, um, you know, we have two so far that have done that. And once we get through five, then we can um, kind of move towards kind of more, um, you know, kind of more at a heartbeat of having people come through the system. Um, so priorities, um, uh, we came up with these kind of four priorities, right? So top priority is sort of happens rarely, but the TOC can at any time say, I want SIG Security to do a review of this particular project, or I think you should adjust your priority too that they, have, they won't interrupt an ongoing assessment. So whatever the TOC says we should do, we would never interrupt an ongoing assessment. We finish it according to our process. If it were to be paused, right, then we might take the next thing in the queue. And so the, any TOC request would be next in the queue, whatever that is. Um, and then we have the next priority is anything that we reviewed before if it needs attention, we make sure that we do that in a timely manner. And that um, one of the things that we talked about very early on is if something's already been audited, that it would be, this assessment is less important than something that hasn't been assessed or audited. However, within a year of the audit, we do want to go through an assessment because what we're finding is that it, it provides a different kind of value than an audit and they're intended in some future date when we get this whole, um, you know, when we prime the pump and get the system going, normally we anticipate there would be an assessment early in the sort of sandbox incubation stage. And then the audit would happen in the incubation page stage. And then the assessment information would be a good thing to give the auditors to, you know, to get to kick off the process. But, you know, it'll be like things happen in order because audits existed before assessments. Um, and then, so then there's the, um, the, where we are at now is that like most of our attention is CNCF projects that request a review, right? And so, or, you know, I wanted to kind of add in anybody in the SIG, if you're like, Hey, here's a CNCF project, which would be great to review. Like, you know, now is a good time to kind of informally encourage people to participate with us. Um, because it is like a little more of a, you know, process that projects have to be willing to, you know, kind of work with us to define the process, which could be exciting to some. I think some of the security related process have been, you know, they've been really great to work with and have been willing to contribute because they're members of the group. Um, and that generally, if something is further, um, you know, in its higher, like more mature graduation stage, that they like, you know, graduated projects would take precedence over incubation, incubation projects would take precedence over sandbox um, in general. And then non-CNCF projects that request a review or are invited, right? So we, all of our projects, like just because it's not a CNCF project doesn't mean it isn't important to our cloud native ecosystem. And that at our discretion, we can say, okay, here's something that's important to the ecosystem. Maybe it's a dependency of a lot of our projects. Maybe it's something that everybody deploys and just, you know, happen to be a mature project not related to the CNCF, then we, you know, could definitely um, evaluate those as well. And then here's the um, note that people questioned, uh, there was a question about, which is that um, the wheel review assess projects annually. Well, it seems like we, we've so far been successful in completing 80% of the work in three weeks. So, um, so I, I'm just wondering if there's, there's something that we have to consider for um, in the case where the TOC wants us to do something, but the project is not ready to do an assessment. Well, I think that's where the if the project hasn't done an assessment we don't start they could be at the oh, top okay. of, you know we could be at, they could be at the top of our queue but it's like waiting on them and then we'll start another thing right so okay, if a gotcha, project gotcha. comes if, if we don't have any like right now 
we don't have a project to assess, right? So we're anticipating that Falco comes in, but if, you know, depending on Falco's timing, which Michael's gonna let us know, um, or the Falco team's gonna let us know, like if they say, okay, we're gonna be ready at the end of January and another project that's further down on the list says, hey, I've got my self-assessment ready, we could fit it in there. And so the more we get uh, you know, into the swing of this, we should be able to um, make that kind of easier to project manage, I think. Any other questions, observations? Okay. Um, do, could you put the link to the document if you already? Um, I uh, did. I didn't title it. Where is it? Where is it? Here, it's this one. Okay. Oops, this was supposed to be down here. Sorry. Okay. All right. Um, so we already talked about the tough stuff. Um, okay. So um, if there's some more questions on that, I think I'll spend a little bit of time. Um, Sarah, do you want to go? Uh, I think you're going through these slides really briefly. Yes. That would be yeah. great. Okay. Let me share my screen. Um, all right. So um, Sarah and I will be doing the session on the SIG security intro um, next week. Um, so we've been working on the slides. I think most of it seems to be kind of just updating uh, whatever that was already there, um, originally put together by uh, Sarah, Dan, and JJ and up making updates to it. So I think most of the overview things like that um, hasn't changed. Um, I think Sarah, you've been updating the timeline. Over yeah, there. I um, was uh, kind of curious what people thought should be significant. Like I, 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 the timeline didn't have anything from the last six months. So I was like, you know, I was looking at squishing this more so that um, there would be a couple of, you know, sort of more options, you know, like maybe putting the whole like safe era into one little um, arrow and then giving more space for our different things. So I, I um, you know, I'm curious. So basically I was, I was thinking like, you know, assessments. What? Yeah. Yeah. Should, like the like, there's the assessments. There's the policy teams. Um, what's that thing? The so I I think perhaps you know more than asserting, um, we began uh, you know doing assessments. Uh, you know the thing that I would I would consider to be at this level of. Um, you know completion and relevance is completing the assessment process right that is an epic amount of work that we went through and created and you know the individual assessments are less relevant I think you know compared to that work and highlighting that here I like that hmm. So we also have a couple things, right? Like the policy stuff, the CNCF security day, um, the supply chain catalog. I'm not sure whether how we can categorize that. Um, I think the supply chain chain catalog is also like worthy of mention. So um, is somebody taking notes on this? Uh, I'm going to change this to anybody can comment right now so that I can drop it in. I'm I'm taking notes on the the PowerPoint side as well. Okay, super. Okay. Um, but uh, and I think the other thing that um is maybe worth noting, and I think also because this is 
the intro session to have people come in is the um, like when we started having meeting facilitators and the um, the roles for members to get involved because um, we had like the initial governance in May when we were kind of accepted as a SIG and then I think there was like August September um, you know, kind of broadening of the role, roles for the SIG which I think is a nice welcoming thing to say right Yeah, maybe we can add like a few like hundred member mark or something <laughs> if, if we have something there. <laughs> 50 member mark. 50, yeah. I, I think we're at 53 still. So, we're, yeah, yeah. Oh, look at this. Yeah. <laughs> nice chart. Yeah. Well, yeah, before I get to that, um, I, I guess anything else Fancy. over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wrote a nice um, bash one liner for that. <laughs> nice. Wow. Can you check that in? Uh, yeah, I would. It's it's not the best code, <laughs> so I just want to put it out there. Full requests are for. All right. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, I basically did like a a small graph on like member growth of um, every month, um, which I think happens to kind of coincide with like really? every KubeCon. Yep. <laughs> you get the spike. <laughs> so yeah, hopefully after this we we see another spike over there. Nice. Yeah, and and you know, uh I, I think yeah, that, that maps all the way back to the beginning because like the very beginning was kind of a uh initial sort of explosion out of um KubeCon. Yeah. After the initial discussion. Or Cloud Native Con. Right. <laughs> So we're not Kubernetes centric. Yeah, sorry, I wasn't sure. I may have jumped forward a bit too fast. Um, were there any other things that that we had ideas of here? Oh yeah, maybe the landscape. Actually, when the draft landscape got in, I think mm -hmm. that's like there have been some good PRs, by the way, people who um, might be interested in participating asynchronously, um, there's some good discussion around um, nudging the categories around. Um, and I think that that's kind of a good aspect of our process to, we, you know, it was very controversial. We decided to just do something <laughs> and get it in there. And then we've had time to kind of um, rejigger the categories as we learn together. So displaying a start to, to end uh, you know, timeline with a high level overview, uh, I think makes a ton of sense for the introduction. Um, you may not need to, uh, you know, in subsequent slides, uh, as you sort of, you know, add, add landscape and other things like that. Um, you may want to just sort of add a list of those and, you know, touch on them rather than trying to, to, to make the metaphor of, of this timeline, uh, you know, hang everything off of. Yeah, I, I just think we should have significant, like I'm not, right now the timeline shows, we have a lot of stuff about how the group is organized, which I think was mm -hmm. appropriate for, uh, you know, our first year where, you know, the content was less surfaced. It was more about sure. getting the group together, so. Can I keep going, Jeff, Brendan? Yep. So I think this is the landscape slide. Uh, I probably have to go update this again. Um, and then the categories. So this is, I think, pretty much the same as the last time. Um, security assessments um, updated to have these completed. Um, I guess I can probably add the Falco stuff. I think it's pretty much we're pretty confident about that that's being the next one right yeah and might be good to in this intro like say explain the if it's not coming like the explain that we that we're get the uh process where we're we don't okay, pick up an assessment till the self-assessment and that we would welcome projects that are interested in <laughs> helping you know right. participating because i think that we're we're consistently gated on the self-assessment starting. 
And so this might be just a good way, place to describe that. You know, right. so that people know that they're getting into, like this is like a, you know, a welcoming come join us in process definition a little bit um rather than an all out please come be reviewed by us it's going to be a process we got it totally down right <laughs> so, so so should we should we um i'm thinking whether we should add like a couple bullet points to say like um here's generally what the process looks like um oh yeah that's self assessment yeah maybe go over that outline and um there's actually a open PR with the life cycle. Is Justin still here? Oh. No, I didn't think so. Okay. Um, quick, quick, quick question uh, about the emojis. Like, why is the thinking face? I guess it was like when it was still not completed. So I guess we can remove it. We can make that a smiley emoji. Yeah, that's what I thought, right? It's a happy process. And it needs to have like the like high five. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll put this. a couple of it. Yeah, leave him. See who notices. Should be fun. He's true. <laughs> or no, this is like all ready for your you to think about. <laughs> Um, I think, yeah, I guess on this side, uh, we can also talk a little bit about, um, I don't know where we were on having kind of like apprenticeship or like um, the interns or observers. I think we decided that they were additional reviewers. Okay, uh, that's, I, I since something. that's not very defined yet, I guess we'll leave that out. Maybe we can try to get that defined. Okay. Because, yeah, the reviewer has some, you know, like we, we or maybe we can just talk about it, because I think it's sort of like, it's it's in the words, but not particularly clear where, you know, the secure to be a security reviewer, you must have been a security reviewer, right? Like there's like this little bit of a chicken and egg thing that we resolve by saying, well, if you don't have, like we just try to make sure that we have at least, you know, in our group of three that we have a certain set of um, experience and then we can have additional reviewers. You know, the team can be bigger than that. Um, and so I think that that would be a good thing to talk about, you know, maybe link to the criteria for security reviewer, but. Okay. Cause yeah, I think people, there's lots of people who would like to get this experience and um, this, you know, KubeCon's a great time to let people know that's a thing. Yeah, I think there was some concerns about that and um, the requirements were a bit specific or a, a bit strict, I think. Um, especially for those that don't generally work in the, have to do security reviews or, or audits. Um. So I think, well, so far, while it's hard to get the team together, we seem to have quite a few volunteers with experience. And then I think the high bar of experience is mitigated by allowing people to gain the experience through doing these reviews. So, so we decided to sort of like, it has, it's actually an open issue on the assessment process that we're gonna officially look at that after we've done five. Okay. I think that it could be a lot, e that we can think for the uh, security reviewer thing, um, when you have three experienced security reviewers or you you will tell me what what number it's needed you can just allow uh for one uh in observer or no no observer but like a intern or something like this so i think it's not so complicated to define something like this and it's maybe good to to discuss a little more in future 
Yeah, Martin, I remember mm. we were having the discussions about this the last time, right? Um, uh, no, no, yeah, yeah. I don't mean now. I don't. I yeah, mean yeah. future after, uh, you know, when there were, um, when there are other uh, assessments coming, uh, it's good to invite others. That, that's what I meant. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I think we are, we are going to be out of time soon. So I'm just going to go to the next few slides. Um, so this slide I put in, I haven't put in details yet. I got to take that out from the slide. Um, I think I want to mention the CN CF Security Day uh, over here. Just put um, the public information that Amy sent me. Uh, I think it'd be great to take some photos on Monday oh, and stick in. That that's a great idea. So we should try to think about. <laughs> I meant to mention that is Michael still here? Um, Amy, like, please help us remember to take photos day of Monday. Yeah, uh, we'll see what we can do as far as being able to get something to you quickly. But um, we no, but I mean, just like us all to take photos for you, Brandon. So. Also, do we Sounds have like great. a hashtag CN Security? Is that what we're going with? Trash pandas. Trash pandas. <laughs> oh! <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Secret agents. <laughs> yeah. When do we get the stickers for our logo? Do we have that? <laughs> um. I mean, I would just go with Sig Security. Don't use a dash, uh, because that breaks uh, some. Um, hashtagging. I think it works on some platforms but not on others. All right. Play it simple. Yeah. And also at the slide over here for the supply chain stuff. Um, I'm hoping that we can merge this before before we talk about it. I think that. Yeah, Santiago said that. We're, yeah, we're working on. So I'm, I, I caught those broken links at the last minute, but he's um, psyched to try to get that merged in this okay, week. Cool. Um, so I added a slide here to kind of talk a little bit. Uh, I, I crawled through the bunch of meeting notes to find kind of a few topics that we have. I'm That's not sure whether this is something that we, if, if you guys remember anything else to add to it, or whether we want to present it in a different way. Well, I think it would be good to link to now we have in our issue template for people to propose a presentation. So we could link to that issue template somehow. And so, and maybe we, we didn't do as many presentations in the last six months um, or the, like in the last, since last KubeCon as we did before that. So it might be good to maybe even go back a ways and highlight some of the presentations um, that we've done in before that. And I have like a whole list because we were going to do that microsite that isn't done yet. I keep planning to do it. And now I have to watch the impeachment hearing. So it's taking up a lot of my time. <laughs> yeah. It, in American democracy. Yeah. If you have done this, I think it would be, be really helpful. I was basically reading through every meeting and trying to figure out which ones are presentations and which ones weren't. So. I will find it. There, I have profound respect for your priorities. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I think what's up is just like coming up over here. Um, we just got to change this a little bit. Um, I guess we will add the microsite since that's that's what seems to be coming up next, right? <laughs> yeah. So, like, I think the. Um, the uh, yeah the white paper is so there's like this new thing that's come up from the TOC I mean it's not really that new but um, the for a long time there's been discussions about um, instead of just prioritizing whoever comes to the TOC to prioritize what gaps there actually are and a bunch of our charter is actually about addressing gaps in the landscape and so that might be a good thing to kind of add in here, even though it's, it's like 
we haven't really figured out a methodology to do it. Like if that's some of the discussion that I think we have to have come later, but, um, but I do think like the supply chain thing is a good example of like sort of just discovering a gap, articulating it. And then we have a process like my, I would expect, I wouldn't be surprised if, um, we, if, if we find or create a project based on the gaps, in the supply chain landscape, right? Or mm -hmm. find something that's missing, right? And, and the, um, the uh, like, sort of like the threat mod modeling um, is like kind of a uh, educational gap that we're all talking about a little bit. So maybe we can just put that in as like identify gaps in the landscape. So this is interesting uh, because I think there was some um... Um, issues that were open that really talked about uh, will six security um, back up a particular project um, because it thinks that it's a good security project because uh, I, I'm not sure whether there's a distinction between backing up a particular project or just like saying that okay here's a gap and I think we need to do something about this particular issue. So I think that like Good to see you. I think I think this is a bigger conversation, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think that like uh, no, we do want to do Dan, are you sure meant to be muted? Can I Oh take this in over? Whoa, whoa. Do it, do it. it. Dan. Can I mute him? I'm sorry. Yes, okay. please. Okay, I can't. I I don't think I have control okay. of that. Yeah. All right. Now All he's right. muted. So, okay. um, I think that like there's been a lot of enthusiasm for best practices, right? And the line between promoting a project and saying it's the best practice to use a project is a little bit yeah. blurry to me. But we don't want to like exclude the option that there may be other ways to do something, right? And so I think that's just we have to kind of work through when, you know, we want to promote something as a best practice, but not, but like somehow figure out how to welcome other approaches to whatever the best practices are that we state, right? So I think we'll have to work through that as we figure out things that we want to advise that people do. So I'm not married to this, but one approach to take with that is to point to one of the NIST, uh, I know Justin doesn't like this, but one of the NIST topics, and then you can list the projects after that, and that way you're not identifying a particular solution. Yeah, I think I think we can dedicate some time, especially to this. I, I think that's, um, this topic is, is been a yeah, maybe, of yeah, maybe we can schedule a topic post KubeCon yeah. so that people know what's coming up. Ooh, nice. <laughs> what do you think? Right, yeah, riding that wave of, uh, of uh, activation and participation. Right, right, good. And Come show us your things. Good. Yeah, so, uh, so yeah, so maybe we can chat about that, Brendan, yeah. like before, like, I don't know, offline of this meeting, we'll coordinate how to invite people to give presentations and, you know, maybe we can um, work on having some agenda items immediately after KubeCon so people have, and, you know, the meetings are more structured when we are likely to have a large influx of new people. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, let's chat about that offline. I think we are almost out of time as well. Um, yeah, so I guess before we end the call, is there anything that um, anyone wants to bring up? Or like, if we want to talk about, I guess we don't have a meeting next week, right? We should make sure that we cancel it. Amy, okay. can you take it off the uh, agenda? Yep, doing so now. Because we usually don't have one during KubeCon. Thank you. Uh, so, I was going to think up about dinner next week in person. Is there? Yeah, that's an issue. If you could comment on it, um, we should. I'm. I thinking it's going to be most likely on Tuesday because there's other stuff on the other days. Yeah. So I. I mean, are you going to like comment on the Slack channel? Like, 
the final decision is made what gets the plan there um so let me let me paste the issue to you and then put your name there just so that we have something to look back onto. I'm afraid it, gets, it may get lost in the Slack channel if we, we just you know post over there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll post something in the channel and then we can follow up from there in the issue. Okay. All right then. I think we uh we are just at two p.m. mark. So thank you, everyone. Thank Thanks, you. Brendan. Thanks, everybody. Do well. Thanks, Brendan. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.